Welcome to Wake Up With God. We live stream Sunday Mass today. We attend the Holy Mass on Sunday 9th June 2024, 10th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Now the prince of this world is to be overthrown, says the Lord. And when I am lifted up from the earth, I shall draw all men to myself. Please keep quiet and concentrate on attending the Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. With Blessed Sunday to all, and a special welcome to any fathers that are here present at Mass this morning. As we commend all our fathers, godfathers, grandfathers, really all men today, as all are called to father others in their life and calling from God. We ask God to bless you in a special way today. Let's open our minds and hearts and listen to God's word. Begin Mass by calling to mind our sins and asking the Lord to show us them so we might beg and receive mercy and healing. He was sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. He came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on all of us. Forgive us our sins. Bring us one day together to everlasting life. Amen. And we pray glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, God, Almighty Father, Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. You alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Let us pray. O God, strength of those who hope in you, graciously hear our pleas, since without you mortal frailty can do nothing. Grant us always the help of your grace that in following your commands, we may please you by our resolve and our deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. In those days, the Israelites came to the desert of Sinai and pitched camp. While Israel was encamped here in front of the mountain, Moses went up the mountain to God. Then the Lord called to him and said, Thus shall you say to the house of Jacob, Tell the Israelites, You have seen for yourselves how I treated the Egyptians and how I bore you up on eagle wings and brought you here to myself. Therefore, if you hearken to my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my special possession, dearer to me than all other people, though all the earth is mine. You shall be to me a kingdom of priests, a holy nation. The word of the Lord. Yes. 
his kindness endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, Christ, while we were still helpless, yet died at the appointed time for the ungodly. Indeed, only with difficulty does one die for a just person, though perhaps for a good person one might even find courage to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. How much more then, since we are now justified by his blood, will we be saved through him from the wrath. Indeed, if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, how much more, once reconciled, will we be saved by his life? Not only that, but we also boast of God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs> The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At the sight of the crowds, Jesus' heart was moved with pity for them because they were troubled and abandoned like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is abundant, but the laborers are few. So ask the master of the harvest to send out laborers for his harvest. Then he summoned his 12 disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to drive them out and to cure every disease and every illness. The names of the 12 apostles are these. First, Simon called Peter and his brother Andrew, James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, the son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon from Cana, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. Jesus sent out these twelve after instructing them thus, Do not go into pagan territory or enter a Samaritan town. Go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, make this proclamation. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse lepers, drive out demons. Without cost you have received. Without cost, you are to give. The Gospel of the Lord. Lord The sight of the crowds, Jesus' heart was moved with pity for them because they were troubled and felt abandoned. We don't have time to go into all the, the Greek of it, but the word to trying to capture what Jesus' experience was looking out at maybe as many as we are here. But his heart, it, it's a, he had a visceral response to the abandonment, the loneliness, the troubles of the people before him. And he's God, so he can see everything in the human heart. And that wasn't something just a long time ago. Today, Jesus Christ knows everything about you. He knows all your troubles. He knows where we feel abandoned or lonely or grieving or anxious. Or 
our sins or our fears and those we love. And so Jesus' response is, is visceral. They say from the bowels, like from way inside his deep soul and self. Did he have this movement towards charity to help as the God-man, the son who would soon redeem us? And what does he do? That's the moment where he calls the 12 and sends them out, the first bishops, the first priests. And he sends them out in pairs to go and to tend to the people, to take away or at least be with them in the places of abandonment and fatigue. Today is Father's Day, so in a special way again, we ask God to bless all our fathers. No father is perfect except the one in heaven who is the father of Jesus. And so our fathers need prayers. And men that are here this morning, God calls us all to father others simply by the gift that he's given us in our lives. We ask God to make us good shepherds. And the best way to be a good shepherd is to let one be shepherded by God himself. This is the great secret to having moving forward and having a good Father's Day is having an interior visceral reception of God's love for us. Today, I couldn't help but also think of the priesthood because the Lord says, go out and be shepherds. He, he commissions the 12 to go out. Um, you know, I remember when I was a young boy, um, I don't know when ever, I can ever pick a minute where I thought, okay, God's calling me to be a priest and a spiritual father. But I do remember as a boy mulling it over in my mind indirectly, and especially at mass, because you'd have a priest at mass. Uh, I was blessed to grow up with Father Lenny Sharon, who was a very quiet priest, sort of a, a quiet countenance. He wouldn't have been the one screaming on the sidelines at a sports game or anything, but he probably would have been praying his rosy quietly in the back, unlike myself. <laughs> but I remember him. So actually, it's very beautiful today, uh, years after his death. I mean, he died way before I was even close to being in seminary. But this is his chalice that I used to use when I was a boy. And I would see him hold it up. I'd be somehow attracted to that. And, uh, and so somehow through God's grace, again, his family got this chalice to me. And I use it when I pray mass privately, but I thought I'd bring it today for Father's Day and to remember him and to kind of even in my own priesthood to ask you today to pray for vocations, but especially to priesthood, religious life, but especially today for spiritual fathers. Again, I remember um, this other priest, Father Mo, just retired. He was a great parish priest to us when we were in high school and teenagers. Back then, CYO was like a big deal. And we used to go on ski trips which was, you know, I didn't ski well, but I just went for the fun of it. But I remember coming downstairs one day, I woke up early and the priest was praying his breviary, the special book the priest prays five times a day. I knew nothing, I thought he was reading the Bible. And then he explained to me, he said, no, we do this five times a day for the people, we're fathers. And he said, we pray this for our parish, the whole world. I was like, really? I was kind of, I remembered that. There was something different about what he was doing, how he was praying for others. And I thought that that was nice. Um, very powerfully, I think of priesthood today too. You know, it's, I know it's Father's Day. Some of you were maybe at my father's funeral last year. My father really had a devotion to Father Ethier, who was his parish priest growing up, kind of like a Father Sharon, who said that if it wasn't for his priest and his teaching him how to pray, he wouldn't have made it through the war in Korea and be able to come back. He credited the priests of fatherhood and his example of praying at preparing him till 17 to go and fight in war and then come back home and continue his experience as a father and a worker and other things. So we think of Father Ethier today too. Next Saturday, Deacon Patrick Ryan is going to be ordained a priest for our diocese. He's very close to us. He lived here with me last summer, and especially down at Thomas More. I ask you to pray for him. If you're free, I'd ask you to go to the ordination next Saturday at 10 o'clock. If you've never seen an ordination or a priest, it's, it's a different, it's a, it's a mass, but it's, it's got the rituals speak to us, reveal to us God's goodness to us. Again, God's visceral response that we all need a spiritual fathers. And I'm asking you to pray for priests. So I let you inside baseball. Priests need priests too. So we have to go to confession to another priest. We can't give ourselves last rites. We can't. We actually have to have priests in our life. 
So we don't want to be without priests either. <laughs> so another good reason to pray for vocations uh, to the priesthood, and it's a powerful reality. You know, so that's the first thing. I know there's three men that were ordained Monday in Bismarck, North Dakota. Young men were ordained for that diocese. And one of them used to stand up here all these Easter weeks. They come and stand here from North Dakota. So one of those men that you've prayed with before uh, is now a priest this week. His, his first masses are, are this morning actually out there. So we pray for that. So just invite you to pray for priests. Again, you might or might not know, we have the most Catholic priests we've ever had in history right now in the world. We have the largest number of Catholics we've ever had in the world. But where we live, eh, not so good. <laughs> so we're contracting, we're shrinking. We know this, people that don't go to Mass, people that don't know the visceral love that God, Jesus, has for them. Because otherwise, they would want the Eucharist, they would want to be here. So that's where you come in. Um, I think what I asked today, it's kind of a two-part homily invitation. One to pray for priests, for more vocations, pray for our seminaries in the Diocese of Providence. We're going to get a little selfish today. Pray for our diocese, that we have more priests. and We have good seminarians. They're extraordinary, but we want more and we need more. That's the bottom line. Number two, you know, Jesus says that the harvest is plenty, laborers are few. And that is true in the vineyard of the church as well. So, you know, I would ask you, how's your harvest going? How are you doing at inviting others to know and receive Jesus, especially in the sacraments. We all know people that no longer practice the faith, right? We know many, we know that. Um, but how are we doing at harvesting? So this past two weeks ago, I was at a local restaurant and the waitress there knows I was the Catholic priest in town and I would get up to go in the back and she stopped me and said, oh, Father, can I ask you a question? Yeah, I said, no, she goes, there's people outside, she said, uh, they go to the Baptist church and they've asked me every time I go to their table, they want me to go to their church with them. And she goes, but I'm Catholic. I said, do you go to mass? She goes, no. <laughs> I said, well, I have a solution. You come to mass Sunday and you tell them you're Catholic and that you're already going to church. She goes, that's a great idea. <laughs> so she came back and she said, it worked. <laughs> and she went to Thomas More this morning. Um, and, and, but I'm just sharing that with you because, you know, When's the last time you prayed with someone? If someone says they're, they're needy, you know, will you say a prayer for me? Say it if it's okay in the right moment. Say a prayer with them right there. Hold their hand and give them a Hail Mary. That's, an, that's harvesting for Christ. Offering to bring someone to Mass. I'm offering to bring someone to confession. You go first. It's not hard. It's good. It's going to make you change your life. We all have things. Come with me and then I'll, I'll go first in line. Then we can go out and celebrate you know, and have a coffee, an ice cream, a glass of wine, and celebrate the mercy of God together. These are things you and I are called to do, and the harvest is, is plenty, but the laborers are few. So we're going to ask of the Lord today, a very special way, again, to raise up spiritual fathers for us. Thank God for the seminarians we have, but, but you, again, I think it's important. Jesus knows everything about us. He knows everything about you, and he has that visceral charity that's we can't imagine how much he knows everything about us, but we can't even imagine his love for us, his desire to be with us and to heal us and to raise us up. We have to experience that. And then once we have that, we're going to want other people uh, to know him. Think in your life, last thought, you know, when there's someone we love and someone else we love, we usually can't wait till those two people meet. You got to meet this person. They changed my life. We all have people like that. And so... If it can become Jesus is the top of that experience, we're going to talk about him to other people. We almost can't help it because uh, we just want them to know the love that we have. So hopefully you experienced that this morning at Mass today. Um, the harvest is plenty, Jesus said. Laborers are few. Um, send workers out into the harvest. Let's, be, let's go get a good harvest for Jesus uh, the rest of this week. Together we pray, I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, and from God, to God from to God, God not made consubstantial with the Father, through him all things remain, for us men, for us salvation. If you are not to the dead, and the Bible is
spirit, this is how we do the Virgin Mary, and we think of him. For us to say, he's crucified, he's crucified, he's not the death, he's buried, and then goes to the end on the third day, and reports to the body. He is sent in the head, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come in and the glory to judge the living and dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son to the glory of the glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and the Son of the Church, and I confess on the baptism of the Jews and the saints, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Heavenly Father, we send Christ your Son. So his sacred heart could love us and bring us home to you, remaining here hidden under simple bread and wine. Hear these our prayers made in his name. That the church will stand before the world without stain or blemish, holy and obedient to God's word. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we will evangelize others to know Christ and come to faith. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those preparing for marriage, that the Lord will strengthen them to live with sacrificial love, faithful to each other and to the church all the days of their life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all fathers and expectant fathers, that they may find Christ in their vocational journey. For fathers who experience the death of a child and for men who long for fatherhood, that their hearts may be filled and consoled. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick or infirmed, and for their caregivers, that God in his mercy will draw close to them and raise them up. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace this week to labor courageously and generously for God's harvest, proclaiming the kingdom of heaven in all that we do. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died, especially Peter Thiel, who died this week, and for the deceased members of the Sinwalt family, for whom this Mass is being offered, that they may find eternal peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Let Father Patrick Ryan's a priestly ministry and fatherhood be blessed in the Dawson Church. He's being called and ordained to serve. We pray to the Lord. Lord Father in heaven, see our yearnings in this morning, our prayers, but answer only those that will make us more like Christ now and to be able to be with you forever in our journeys home. We make all these prayers with confidence and trust through Christ our Lord. Amen. Till we 
Pray with me now that my sacrifice and yours may become acceptable to God, who is the Almighty Father. O God, who in the offerings presented here provide for the twofold needs of human nature, nourishing us with food, renewing us with your sacrament, grant we pray that the sustenance they provide may not fail us in body or in spirit. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Yes. Lift up your hearts. Yes. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Yes. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you laid the foundation of the world, have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ who is the Lord. So with the angels we praise you as we join in their joyful celebration and song. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. A similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, blood of the new and eternal covenant you poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Richard, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, the members of the Sinwalt family for whom this sacrifice is shed. We commend to you the souls of our fathers and men who have fathered us and priests who have died, that you might forgive their sins. Remember all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection 
All who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, St. Thomas More, St. Veronica, St. John Fisher, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Extra mindful today of our Heavenly Father, the Father of Jesus Christ, who sacrifices only Son, who found our church to institute the sacraments, to bring us home with him. Very beautiful when Jesus was asked how to teach, they teach us to pray. The first two words, our Father and our, we share the same Father, the perfect Father, the only perfect Father. So let us pray for our fathers and each other. We might have a good harvest in our lives as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil graciously. Grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy may be always free from sin, safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Offer to those around you a sign of God's peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. We turn the ground, 
showing hope and peace where none is found in selfless love God's life abounds we till the earth we tend the ground as our hearts are with grateful hearts let us receive these gifts of love and make return to bless the world, to bless the world. We till the earth, we turn the ground, showing hope and peace where none is found in selfless love. God's life above. We tell the earth, we turn the ground. All creatures share one common home, one loving God, one song of hope. The rocks cry out and praise and lead. Rise up to sing. We till the earth, we turn the ground, showing hope and peace where none is found. In selfless love, God's life abounds. We till the earth, we turn the ground. Thank you. 
Heavenly Father, we ask you to send down your Holy Spirit upon these men, our brothers. We pray that in the depths of their hearts and souls, their identity is your beloved son. They experience this sonship so deeply that in times of weaknesses, in times of great challenge, they may rest in peace in this true identity of theirs as a beloved son of yours. We do ask you, Lord, to fill them with the grace of patience with themselves and others, but especially those entrusted to them, to never grow discouraged in times of fatigue, but to also thank you today for all the gifts, the graces that flow from and through their vocation to themselves and to others. Give them the grace to want to be in heaven more than any other desire and to love you first, so that they can love those they've been called to serve in love more. We ask you to bless this Father's Day for them and for all our fathers, especially those that are in need of experiencing your love. God bless and protect these men, give them the graces that St. Joseph had to lay down his life for Mary and Jesus and to turn to you in times of challenge. We ask you to fill them with your love, the gratitude today in their hearts, and again, a blessing, a special blessing from on high that rests deep in their heart and soul. May God bless them and protect them, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So happy Father's Day to all of you, too. Bless you. Please stand. At this reception of Holy Communion, O Lord, it foreshadows the union of the faithful in you. So we bring about unity in your church through Christ our Lord. Amen. So the final blessing, I really urge you to take the bulletin home today. There are many great things happening. There's a new young adult group starting in our parish, the Versailles group. You have to be in your 20s and 30s to go, so I can't go. But I invite you to really pray about that. It's all Life in the Spirit seminar. Many Catholics say they want to know more about their faith. There are great apps and ways to do that today. But Life in the Spirit seminar is pretty awesome. I invite you to go to, go to the first one. If you don't like it, you don't have to go back, but give it a shot. Go and be there and listen and learn about our, our great faith and meet others as well. I encourage you towards that. And we'll have our Pepper the Pastor night. If you want to come and chat, uh, ask anonymous questions or open questions about our faith. And uh, and lastly, uh, yeah, try to come to that ordination Saturday if you can. I think it would fill your mind and your heart with love. It'd be, it's an extraordinary thing to see if you haven't seen an ordination before. And lastly, thank you for the patience with the parking lot. They're going to put some asphalt down on the other side next week, and then we're, we're getting there. We're really cresting over the hill towards uh, finishing. So appreciate your patience, your love, and your generosity uh, to make that happen. The Lord be with you. Yes. Almighty God bless all of you and protect you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yes. This Holy Mass is ended. Go now and glorify the Lord by your life. Yes. Thanks yes. be to God. Please join us in singing number 386. Go out. Go out. Last thing, St. Thomas More's feast day is June 22nd. We have adoration till noon in the church. Uh, so don't, and take the bulletin. It explains his life and John Fisher's life that we all should know more about. So sorry, don't forget to do that too. Now we can all sing.
Cảm ơn các bạn đã xem video. Nếu thấy hay, hãy nhấn like, đăng ký kênh và comment để ủng hộ chúng mình nhé.